Massive storms, flooding, extreme heat, droughts, air pollution, increased rates of disease, changes to our food and water. Global warming and the changes to climate to come with it are increasing human health risks. Our physical and mental health both stand to suffer, and some populations are more vulnerable than others. What are the specific health issues? What can we do to address them? And most importantly, is there any hope? We hope to answer these questions and more in a handful of episodes on climate change and health. Let's start at the beginning and talk about what climate change is and how it impacts health. That's the topic of this week's Healthcare Triage. When the sun's heat is trapped in our atmosphere by gases, we call it the greenhouse effect. Gases like carbon dioxide and methane are big contributors to this process. And don't get me wrong, we need the greenhouse effect. In moderation, it keeps our planet at a comfortable temperature. However, there's a level at which this effect becomes a problem and human activity is pushing us in that direction. When humans do things like burn coal and oil, examples of fossil fuels, we increase the amount of CO2 in our atmosphere. In fact, since 1750, we have increased these levels by almost 50%. Methane, which is mainly emitted via the production of oil and gas, as well as from livestock and landfills, is also drastically increasing. Since the Industrial Revolution, methane levels in our atmosphere have more than doubled. This just scratches the surface of what's going on with climate change. But since we're here to talk about the health effects that result from these changes, just suffice it to say that our world is swinging way too far to the hot side of the temperature gauge. Sure, climate has fluctuated across history, but the rate of its current warming is alarming, and it is directly connected to human activity. You might be saying, so what? I love summer. And when it gets too hot, I'll just scoop back inside and enjoy some air conditioning. I wish it were that easy, but outside the fact that not every person on the planet has air conditioning, and setting aside the fact that air conditioning contributes to climate change, there are far worse effects than hotter summer days. We're talking extreme heat, as in heat waves that can result in death. We're talking about droughts. We're also talking about more intense hurricanes and considering that less intense hurricanes already wreak havoc and result in loss of life, you can see why that's a problem. We're also seeing more intense wildfires, flooding, and winter storms. In short, what we're worried about is extreme weather events that have drastic, immediate impacts on health. And we're worried about them happening more often. For example, we're currently seeing about six heat waves per year in major U.S. cities, compared to only two per year in the 1960s. There are also indirect, less immediate effects. A change in climate can result in changes to air quality. Increases in temperature cause increases in air pollutants and allergens, leading to higher incidence of things like asthma and allergies. In 2021, particle pollution reached never-before-seen levels in eastern Siberia. This was a result of wildfires, and places like Canada and the western U.S. experienced fairly high levels themselves. An uptick in infectious diseases is also a big climate-related concern. Ecosystems are drastically affected by climate change, and one result of this is that our exposure to disease-causing animals and insects can increase. Moreover, we have evidence that suggests some pathogens are becoming more transmissible due to changes in climate. Climate-induced changes to our water are also introducing water supply and access issues. Moreover, it's threatening the safety of our water. Lack of access to clean drinking water is a major threat to human health. In addition, access to food becomes a greater issue as the planet warms. We need water for things like crops and livestock. The diversity of available food may suffer, which can affect overall nutrition. Lower supply will mean some people go without food. And for those that can access it, it will be much more expensive. Food production will also be impacted by many of the other factors we've already mentioned, like fires and pests. And by this point, you might be feeling a little depressed, a little anxious, a little hopeless, or a little of all three. Which brings me to my next point, climate change and psychological health. Events like disease, severe weather, and limited access to food and water generally affect more than physical health. There are terrible mental health consequences as well. But more recently, attention has been given to the anxiety associated with climate change before any direct consequences have been experienced. The threat of climate change is pretty well known now. And for many, it is causing a reassessment of where we live, how secure we are both now and in the future, and if we have kids, how secure their future is. 
It's a big, looming problem that's shrouded in uncertainty, making it the perfect recipe for anxiety. In one 2019 survey, nearly 70% of adults reported having at least a little anxiety about climate change. So in order not to make all that anxiety worse, we'll thread some optimism by talking about what we're doing about climate change and what more we could do. Before we get there, though, we have to acknowledge that the effects of climate change won't be the same for everyone. On this planet of ours, we already have major disparities between who has access to things like affordable, healthy food, clean water, and health care. Lack of resources affects someone's ability to deal with or avoid the effects of climate change, meaning some people are a lot more vulnerable and are going to suffer a lot more than others. This makes public health efforts to combat climate change even more important. Public health experts are working on strategies to build resilience to the effects of a warming planet, particularly in our most at-risk communities. Beyond raising awareness, these efforts include things like implementing certain building and zoning codes, affordable weatherization programs, and air quality improvement programs. Also important will be large-scale, global policies to limit temperature increases as much as possible. What are the most effective policies? What have we implemented so far? What are we still working to implement? What are the barriers to effective legislation and what does that mean for our health? More importantly, there is hope. We can still do something about this. But we have to face the hard facts so we know what we're dealing with. Climate action works, and this series represents our belief that it all starts with education. Paige, enjoy this episode. You might enjoy this previous episode on health harms from pollution can choke the economy. We'd appreciate it if you'd like the video, subscribe to the channel down below, and consider going to patreon.com slash healthcare triage, where you can help support the show, make it bigger and better. We'd like to especially thank our research associates, Joe Sevitz, Edward Lillehome, and Brian Nam, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral, Sam.